Hello. So what I'm going to talk about today is how to love after a loss. Now, you may think, all right, well, how? And what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is there's different contexts um, in which you can use this kind of, I guess, outlook perspective that I'm going to propose here. Um, oh, I'm popular. And what I'm, what it is is essentially you could take any form of loss, losing a family member or a loved one or a spouse, something along those lines, um, in a sense that they had passed away. Another one in a sense of uh, like a relationship coming to an end, um, losing um, a job or more specifically maybe something you're more passionate about like a sport or a hobby that you are are not able to do anymore something along those lines so for me one of the greatest things that I've been able to do is be able to see things as not so black and white and understand that in the bad there is good and in the good there is bad more specifically for me in my life, I've been confronted with situations that a lot of people would deem tragic and sad. And I think those are accurate adjectives, but I also have developed this idea and this feeling that, hey, they're only bad because they were good. And I know that may sound a little awkward initially um, but I kind of made this realization probably about five years ago and I've been kind of slowly perfecting it in the process I think in my own way and what it is is well if you feel pain and loss and just that sense of discomfort in the various ways it could represent itself not being able to sleep, feeling bad, just having that mental and emotional anguish going on. Um, well, if there was something bad going on, then you wouldn't suffer in that way, right? So because you are suffering means that there was something great there, something positive there. And... For me, when I do, when I had suffered about those things, when I developed that perspective, I was able to think like, hey, I feel bad because there was good. And in a way that helps to alleviate those bad moments and really have them um, kind of overtake um, or have them take you into a place where you don't want to be. So in a sense, I kind of just... It's kind of a cycle where it was like there was something positive it was lost now there's negative but the negative is actually just the result of a positive so it's kind of like a loop um, in a sense with those four main points I had described um, so in realizing your suffering is there it's because there's something great there and that's something to be grateful for thankful for and just because it may not necessarily be there in the same shape or way you experienced it before um, doesn't mean that there you have to replace it with suffering. Um, there was also something that, well, a conversation that had taken place in my life and I'm going to paraphrase a book, but it said um, something along the lines of, do you think you love more because you suffer more? And that really resonated with me because I have experienced times of tremendous suffering and anguish. And I felt as though that was the result of my love and my emotions. But I realized it was just the result of me struggling with the concept and the loss of the the loss of 
the individual or individuals. And so that really helped out a lot to understand that, hey, you're feeling bad because there was good. And so in a sense, it helps to alleviate that kind of, at least in my experience, put kind of a smile on my face, make me feel like, hey, yeah, you're right. You know, like, um, you know, along those lines. Now, in terms of loving someone or something, when it's still present, or when it has, I guess you could say, if in your perspective you see it as something that has harmed you, something that has done, um, something that has just impacted you in a negative way, uh, you can see it as, okay, my response to this stimulus is negative, and... Therefore, I need to figure myself out and change, et cetera, et cetera. Some, usually a lot of people don't do that. What they'll tend to do is, from what I've seen, what they'll tend to do is be like, this thing is bad to me, for me, and so I have to distance myself from it, or what have you. Now, for me, I have since a child been obsessed with love stories, right? Like I would sit in front of the TV and went, watch the Disney Hunchback of Notre Dame and I would sit there and see like the love story and how Quasimodo like feeling this love, feeling like this desire, he was able to like take a step back and allow Esmeralda and the other humble whose name I'm forgetting right now Wow, I can't believe I forgot his name. Be together. And that was like the ultimate sacrifice in my eyes, you know? It's like, dude, that is like a selfless act. Like, that is just how much strength, how much character, how much just integrity does it take to do that? I thought that was amazing. And then also, <clears throat> as a pretty common thing with Disney movies, having people romantically be together. And so into my teenage years, I think that kind of manifested. I started doing sports, things of that nature. And I was always kind of, I guess, looking for that one, right? And in high school, Twilight came out. And I was like, you know, oh man, this is the shiz night. I know I may catch some steam from it, but that was my train of thought at the time. And I mean, frankly speaking, two immortal beings... In crazy love together for ever seems like a pretty ideal uh, story or at least ending to a story um, and so I was captivated by that for a while and so I guess I fell in love with this idea of love and I tried with a lot of trials and tribulations to manifest that in my own life and the attempts were just not really successful but in terms of those individuals what I was able to realize and what I had worked on is being able to have this kind of unconditional love in a sense where I was able to I was able to, uh, something funny just popped up over there, um, where I was able to still have those positive emotions and those positive perspectives of those people um, while feeling those negative emotions. And then over time, those negative emotions kind of dissipated, kind of worked themselves out. And all that was left over was just that positive, um, what some, I guess, could describe as, as an unconditional love. And I realized, like, wow, that... And it kind of came for, full circle for me. I'm like, whoa, dude, I'm like... I have in me to be the dude from the movies, right? I could be Quasimodo. Or the guy who ends up with Esmeralda. 
see this. Ready? Anyways, it's gonna bother me. Bryce, what's the dude's name from Quasimodo? The guy who ends up with Esmeralda? I got those for you from Julian. Thank you. What's the, the guy's guy name? From Esmeralda. The uh, blonde dude? Yeah. Sir Eric, I think? No? Eric? Yes, sir Eric. Yeah. No, it was, it was like. Phoebus or something. Fe oh, yeah, Phoebus. Okay, Phoebus. Phoebus. Okay, I know it. Phoebus. Something along those lines. Wait, Anyways. Why am I getting. Okay. I'm recorded? It's okay, it's not a big deal. And so, gosh dang, lost my trying to fall. Okay, I think I got it now. So, anyways, <clears throat> I was able to create those conditions to where I created myself to be this individual who who really is just able to just um. Manifest love, I guess. I could describe that better, but it's all coming off the top of my head, so. Anyways, I think y'all get the gist, but with that capability and that happening um, in reality and me accomplishing that in reality to these individuals, I felt this sense of pride, this happiness, and just this sense of like, man, like I, I'm, I can be something great here and I am something great here. And so it is something that has helped me to create a better view of myself, to create a better view of the world. And so I guess, Ultimately, what I'm doing is I'm choosing love at the end of the day. I'm not choosing to feel smited by things that have happened or scenarios that have happened or feeling angry and upset about the potential void that's left behind from someone leaving in whatever manner they did. But I'm able to, from what I had talked about before is realize hey any negativity that's there is just the result of positivity and not having that same positivity in my life now so in my mind it was kind of like why am I taking something positive and turning it to a negative that's what it seemed like for me and I felt in a way I was kind of not being That's not what I wanted those people to represent in my life. That's not how I wanted them to manifest themselves in my life by causing me anguish. Um, and so that was the first step. The second one was really just being vulnerable and having the courage to always try to be aligning with what I feel is the most valuable thing and who, what I think is an incredibly valuable individual, someone who is kind of always going to be that, like, person who, who you know you could reach out to and all you would get from them is love. And I kind of realized, like, in my life, that was always what I had longed for, right? And... I guess because I wanted that so desperately and because I thought it was so, so valuable, I molded myself to be that way. And so I think that kind of describes that I wish I had taken bullet points or something like that, but it's really just, um, it's a pretty straightforward and simple um, strategy, but it's incredibly difficult. And it takes a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of anguish, but there's a lot of... Honestly, I think it's probably in like the top 10 things 
that are most beneficial to an individual and to the world is being able to cultivate yourself in the ways I have described. Um, and so with that, there's um, some food for thought. And I'm curious to know um, if other, there I am being popular again. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm just curious to know <laughs> if uh, other people have felt this way. Other people have came to these maybe conclusions and realizations on their own and how they have. Um, yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Um, it's probably going to be difficult thing to express and achieve but speaking from experience it's 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 absolutely great um and i encourage everyone to at the bare minimum attempt to do these things and adopt these perspectives and viewpoints even just to play with even just to try out but i assure you that if you do take that time and make those progressions and be serious about it and really be courageous enough to be vulnerable and do these things and have the resilience and fortitude to face the difficult things. Um, there is just a type of greatness and comfort and just something that's just so profound that you know, like, it's really something you have to experience for yourself. And, um, so hopefully this video was interesting and it's able to provide some insight and possibly motivation, um, to becoming ultimately just a better version of yourself. And hopefully, and optimistically, a more loving an always loving version of yourself. All right.